Hi everybody. Uh, what we are watching here today, this is a YouTube video, as you can as you can tell, of uh, a thought to be long lost newsreel from uh, the 1919 World Series between the Chicago White Sox and Cincinnati Reds. And of course, this World Series is famous because the uh, White Sox threw the World Series in uh, in 1919 and lost it on purpose, were paid by gamblers to, to lose it. Now, I'm going to be stopping here occasionally just to show you some things. You can see this stadium here. This is Comiskey Park in Chicago. And we know that because you see these arched windows that are, that are here. These are uh, very unique to Comiskey Park in Chicago. And this, and this ballpark was open for about 80 years, so an awful lot. Generations of White Sox fans grew up uh, at that ballpark, so they, they are very familiar with it. Of course, it's been gone now for about 25 years, but uh, it's something that is uh, very well known among a, a certain generation of White Sox fans. Now, you see this... Uh, film here is pretty deteriorated but considering that this film is almost a hundred years old it's it's actually in in pretty good shape and this was something we never thought that we were we were going to uh going to see at all so the fact that we got you know a little bit of mess here on the sides is no no huge uh huge deal um now, one thing that you'll you'll notice here is look at the way the fans are all dressed. Everybody's dressed up. You know, they've got jackets, hats. Uh, you know, nobody was wearing jerseys to or, or baseball caps to to the game back then. You know, people just dressed differently. Now, it doesn't make anything one uh, one way better or the other. It's just different. Um, now we see uh, we're going to see a, a shot here of Dickie Kerr, uh, who was one of the pitchers on the White Sox who was not involved in the fix. He won two ball games. He only pitched two ball games, so he did he did quite well. Now this is something here that you're going to see uh, that was done. Uh, you see thousands of people here in New York following the World Series, and it's kind of interesting how they how they did it. They would recreate the game using this little board thing and uh that's something that uh you know there was no tv there was no radio at the time so it, it ended up being kind of a uh, that was the only way if you wanted to follow the game that was the way you were going to have to do it okay uh now we're going to see this is cincinnati's redland field uh if you compare it with the uh the stadium that we saw before kind of similar but um but you know different in certain certain ways uh you know you see these screens here that uh are different from those arched windows in uh in Comiskey Park so you know a little bit different you know and these are things that uh that baseball fans recognize about particular ballparks they're all different it's not like a football stadium now one thing i want you to see here is take a look you know this is the Cincinnati Reds bench okay it's not it's actually it, it is a dugout you can see they're actually uh, their feet are below ground here, but really all it is is just kind of like a trough, and then they then they sit down on the bench. But here are the fans right behind them. There's no uh, separation between the the fans and the uh, uh, players really at all. I mean, those fans can just lean over and and say hi and talk to them, which you would think is kind of nice. But I want to show you something here when we see the White Sox bench, because uh, it's it's going to be very much the the same thing. Okay, now. Here are the White Sox. Okay, now you see this guy here, player for the Sox. All the White Sox lined up along the along the bench, and then this guy right here. Okay, he's leaning over the bench, just talking to to guys, and you're gonna see his face here in a second. And that's Billy Maharg. Now, Bill Maharg was a gambler. And a criminal. He was one of the guys involved in creating the fix of the of the World Series. And I want you to think about it. Uh, you know, those players that are sitting on that bench over here, uh, they had nothing separating them from these guys. And they realized once they got into it that, you know, they were messing around with, with criminals. And uh, there's very little stopping those guys from visiting violence on on them if they want to there's a reason that nobody really who was involved in the fix talked about it 
later on. You know, when they when they became old men, they didn't say a word. And the guys who were involved in the fix didn't say anything. And the other guys who weren't involved in the fix didn't say anything. There's a lot that we we only know because the gamblers eventually talk, but the players they were scared by by the whole thing. Okay, now we're. Uh, we're seeing here a, uh, a little bit of uh, highlights. Some of the, the players that were involved, right? That shortstop, that's Swede Risberg right there. He was definitely involved in the fix. There's Shoeless Joe Jackson. He was in, involved in the, in the fix. Uh, we're going to see Eddie Seacott here in just a minute. Actually, uh, he's getting going to get knocked out of, the, out of the ball game. He gives up five runs <clears throat> in, uh, in one inning. Um, so I'll point out a, a couple of the, the players who, who were involved in it. There's Seacott, right? There's a there's a hit here that that leads to runs scoring for the for the Reds. You're gonna see Chick Gandal come running in here as they they kind of mess up a, a cutoff play. All right, but you can see they start to they start to come together. There's Chick Gandal, there's Eddie Seacott, they were involved, right? That's Eddie Collins who was not involved. That's Swede Risberg walking in. Okay, so you can you can see you know all of these guys dealt with it in in their own own way. Um, now this is kind of just tacked on here for the last thirty seconds of the of the film. Uh, they've actually got an airplane. Okay, and this was a big deal. You know, you and I have grown up with shots of stadiums taken from the air, so it's not you know it's not that big of a deal to us. But most people had hardly seen airplanes, much less seen what what something looked like from the air. So that that was you know doesn't seem like a big deal, but that was a thrill for people in 1919 to see the picture of the stadium taken from the air. Here's Eddie Seacott, who I mentioned before, and that's Dutch Roy there, right, right there. So just giving you some images that are. Uh, Kind of along the uh, <clears throat> the same way as uh, as what we've what we've read about and other things that we've seen. So I, I hope you you enjoyed being able to see that. Okay, take it easy.